Hi, thanks for joining me. Back in 2018, I created a blog post on making a fabric candle mat. And as it's by far the most viewed page on our blog, I decided it's uh, the best thing to make for our first YouTube video. So let's get started. You'll need a total of 24 squares of fabric measuring 6 inches. 12 from one fabric, I'm using our cream poinsettia and 12 from a plain fabric. In this case, I'm using our plain cotton in red. You also need 12 squares of fuser web. These need to be cut at 5.5 by 5.5 inches so that they're smaller than the squares of fabric. 12 buttons, rulers, scissors, or a rotary cutter and mat, which is my preferred method. Your sewing machine, thread, an iron, and something to mark your fabric. I generally prefer to use heat erasable pens as they show up well on light fabrics and come away like magic under the heat of the iron. However, if you're using darker fabrics, chalk or chalk pencils will work well. Now, I use a 60mm rotary cutter as it means I can cut through several layers in one go. Go ahead and cut out 12 squares from each fabric. As mentioned before, these are 6 inches by 6 inches. Now cut 12 pieces of fuser web, 5.5 by 5.5 inches. I'll make sure all this information is listed below and if you prefer to read rather than watch you can always take a look at this project on our blog. Take a piece of fuser web and place it on the back of your plain fabric with the paper side up. Run your iron over the paper side to fuse it to the fabric. Let the fabric and fuser web completely cool then strip off the paper. Almost time for a little sewing. Pair up a main fabric with a plain fabric and place them right sides together, pretty side to pretty side. If you're new to sewing, you might find it easier to pin this together um, or even use clips. I generally don't pin unless I have to, but then that's because I'm lazy. We're going to sew around this using a quarter inch seam allowance. Starting around 2 inches in, sew, backstitch a few stitches, then sew around the square using that quarter inch seam allowance. When you get to the corner, stop sewing with your needle still in the down position. Lift the presser foot and pivot your fabric, then continue to sew around. until you're two inches in on the opposite side of that starting edge. Then backstitch again to reinforce the last few stitches. Backstitching will help keep your stitches in place when you turn the fabrics right way out through this turning gap you left. Clip excess fabric from the four corners. and remove any loose threads. Turn everything right side out.
we want these edges as flat as possible. I use a corner and edge shaper to poke out the corners as much as I can, but be careful not to push too hard. You don't want this thing coming through the stitches. We'll fuse these two layers together now that the fuser web is on the inside. Give us a good run over with your iron. Try to stay away from the gap uh, as much as you possibly can. To close up that gap, give a little tug on either side of the opening. The fabric will want to automatically draw inside. Top stitch around the entire square close to the edge. This closes up the gap and leaves you with a nice finish around the squares. Using the heat erasable pen, mark from the top right corner down 4 inches. Then mark from that same point over 4 inches. Move to the bottom left corner and mark in the same way, this time at 1.5 inches, both across and then up. Using the marks as a guide, mark a line from one point to the other as you can see me doing here. These are stitch lines, don't panic about the lines themselves. Once they're stitched, just run the iron over them and it will remove them. Now your squares are complete, place two together. The poinsettia fabric on square one should be facing the poinsettia fabric on square two. Again, you can pin or clip these if you, uh, if you prefer. Sew down your marked line, remembering to backstitch at the beginning and end. Open up those two squares so that the fabric from square one is out of the way and place a third square against the second. Sew down your mark line and repeat this until you've used up all your squares. The final line of stitching will join your first square to your last square and that will form a circle.
Now for some hand stitching, which I'm really not a fan of. Uh, fold over two adjoining flaps and stitch a button through both layers of fabric. Do this all the way around. Pop in a candle and there you go. Please consider subscribing so you're the first to see any of our new videos and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.